Morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me today to listen to what I think is a very exciting topic in the payments landscape. ISO 2022 and some of the key benefits it could bring to the payments world. My name is Carl Lee, and I'm an ISO 2022 analyst at Payments Canada. This year, ISO 2022 has achieved some major milestones, both globally and domestically here in Canada. You could see in the red the implementation of ISO 2022 in CBPR Plus, Euro 1, Target 2, and our very own links. So now we have ISO 2022 implemented in our cross-border space, our European system, and our Canadian high-value payment system. Now, what you see on the slide is a fraction of the systems and platforms that are currently live with ISO 2022. And we're only showing the high-value payment system. There are a lot more systems that have gone live and still have to go live with ISO 2022. And until every jurisdiction is live, we are living in a, what we call a coexistence phase with the MT messages, with a planned end date of November 2025. Now that ISO 2022 is starting to see widespread use, we will hopefully begin to see the true benefits it has to offer. And that's what I'm here today to talk to you about. Now, what you see on your screen are examples of what could come up if you were to Google what are some of the benefits of ISO 2022. If you haven't really been in the ISO 2022 payment space, you may not know exactly how these could be beneficial and to whom, but let me give you a quick explanation of each of these examples. Faster and more efficient. So structured data elements can help straight through processing because the data will always be structured and always in the same spot. FinTechs, FIs, and financial institutions can build solutions around these elements, eliminating manual labor for exceptions. Richard Data. ISO 2022 structured approach can achieve better quality of data, and the vast amount of data it can retain will provide a quantity of data. So when we talk about Richard Data, we're talking about quality of data and quantity of data. Future proofing. ISO 2022 is designed to be ever-changing, allowing anyone to submit a change request that will be reviewed on a yearly basis. Interoperability. The ability to work within any jurisdiction and is built to be compatible globally. Greater security. More data in an ISO message for FIs to do their AML checks against. Greater risk management the ability to have precise reporting to regulators. Now, moving forward, I'd like to give you a little bit more insight on how ISO 2022 can potentially benefit you as an individual, a corporate, a fintech, and a financial institution, which you have heard me saying, calling it as FIs. So the first player we would like to cover is individuals. How could ISO 2022 benefit the individual? Well, have you ever looked at your bank statement and wondered what would that debit or credit was for? Richer data that travels with the ISO 2022 message can be a potential solution for the individual. FIs and corporates have an opportunity to pass this benefit of rich data to their clients. They can provide the end user with more detailed information on all of their transactions and let them know exactly what they're looking at. Now, if you were to look at your statement today, it may look like the left-hand side of our slide where descriptions seem very basic. Bill payments, deposits, transfer, a numbered company name. You're, you, you might be thinking to yourself, what are all these, what do they represent? What are these for? Well, with an ISO 2022 message, these descriptions can be updated and it could tell a clearer story. The, the first bill payment, it was an internet bill with an invoice number and for which month it was for. Your credit that you received, oh, it was your March payroll for your, from your employer, Charles Jr. The transfer was a transfer that you made for a bike that you purchased. And that numbered company, oh, that was macro bikes with an, an actual invoice number because you forgot you had to buy an extra part for your bike and you went online and you bought it in macro bikes. This benefit can help individuals better understand their spending habits and be better informed on what they're looking at when looking at the bank statement.
Rich data can help corporates become faster and more efficient in many aspects of their business. One process it could help them with is the reconciliation. On the left shows an example of an empty remittance information field before ISO 20022. So when corporates send and receive payments, they use a free format field to put their invoices and description of the product. Since it is a free format, they can provide the information in many different ways. But as, as an example, they could potentially use the French word for invoice, facture. They could use a short form, INV. They could exclude the word invoice altogether and just put a number down. It really is the Wild West inside the MT women's information field. Another limitation and issue with the free format field as pos is possible truncation. So as you can see in the red on the slide, you can see the women's information being left off the payment as they are only limited to 140 characters. Now, can you imagine thousands of corporates sending thousands of payments? And in those payments, you have remittance information that is not consistent. It could lead to a lot of confusion and a lot of manual intervention. Now, on the right-hand side, it shows an example of remittance information using an ISO 20022 message. So how does this help? Well, the introduction of the structured remittance information element provides corporates a specific path to put key information. There's a space for them to put a code word that could represent an invoice. So in this example, we use CINV for commercial invoice. There's another space specifically for them to put the invoice number, which eliminates any free format ambiguity. And then there's a description element that could be placed in a whole other section for human consumption, and it does not impact the rest of the structured data. So not only is the data structured, but the ISO 22 standard can, hand up to, can handle up to 10,000 characters in the structured remains information element. Having these details presented in a structured format could potentially help corporates automate the reconciliation process as well. Dispute resolution, resolution is another process that could potentially be made more efficient. As an example, exceptions and investigations can sometimes be difficult because the right information is not provided either in the request for the information or on the original payment itself. With components like the UETR on the actual payment and having mandatory elements like end-to-end -end ID, it can make it easier to locate the original payment, helping with the amount of time it takes for corporate's ENI process. Quality data can help make the operations for payments quick and more efficient. So we've now seen how richer data can help the individual and the corporate. But it could also help the fintechs. The ISO 2022 standard provides rich and structured data that is being adopted globally by different market infrastructures and FIs. The end goal of ISO 2022 is to provide a harmonized way of sending payments worldwide. With this knowledge, fintechs have the ability to reach places they may not have been able to reach pre ISO 2022. Fintechs can build solutions not only for the players in one jurisdiction, but a solution that could potentially work in other jurisdictions as well. An example, Europe has the IBAN, which is their form of identification for their customers, and Canada has the clearing code with the account number, and, and that's their identification for their clients. The two forms of identification are vastly different from each other. The IBAN can be up to 34 characters long, and the Canadian clearing code can be up to 15 characters long. Without understanding each other's systems, it may be difficult to send a straight through payment to one another, causing delays in the payment lifecycle. Using 2022, FinTechs can build solutions that can work between both jurisdictions to ensure the right information is populated in the correct location in the payment. This interoperability allows for the same built application to be potentially used in both Canada and Europe. Similar to all the other players, FIs can benefit from the richer data provided in an ISO 2022 message. FIs can use this data to better understand their clients and also help with FIs' ability to manage risk and be better prepared to provide the correct information to regulators. Regulators are becoming more focused on building a complete end-to-end -end payment with new elements that can be populated in an ISO 2022 message. For example, the ISO 2022 components that are shown on the screen, the ultimate debtor, ultimate creditor, 
initiating party, previous instructing agents, and intermediary agents. FIs now would have more insight into a complete serial payment. If any of these optional components in an ISO 20022 message are used, they must be carried across the end-to-end -end cross border payment chain unchanged. The benefit to the FIs would be that the full payment data that travels with the payment, helping them build on client KYC profiles and would additionally, additionally satisfy certain regulatory requirements. As an example, where initially the funds came from, who is the final beneficiary and which jurisdictions did the funds touch before getting to its final destinations? Elements of what regulata regulators require for a transparent payment can be seen in part H from the Government of Canada's Proceeds of Crime, Money Laundering and Terrorist Financial Act. So ISO 2022 standard has created benefits for each of these players in the payment ecosystem, all revolving around richer data, but have different impacts to each. It starts with the individual initiating payment with rich data. The corporate was then able to take that rich data to help build a back-end system to officially reconcile its payments and deal with disputes more effectively. The corporate partners with the FinTech to help build that solution. And because that solution is standard, it is interoperable, granting the FinTech access to a potential new market. It allowed the bank to receive this information, create analytics to help them better understand their clients, and additionally satisfy regulatory requirements. In the end, it allowed the final beneficiary to receive a richer data payment eliminating any uncertainty of what that payment is for. And who could that final ben beneficiary be? Well, it may be you. We would like to challenge each of you to reflect on how ISO 2022 may be expanded within your organizations, look for solutions to current issues, or develop innovative ways to add value to your organization, the global payment ecosystems, or your everyday life. I appreciate you coming and listening to the future of payments, that is ISO 2022, and all the benefits it could potentially provide. Again, my name is Carl Lee. I'm an ISO 2022 analyst here at Payments Canada. And if you'd like more information about this, please visit our website at payments.ca. Thank you and have a great day.